Good evening everyone, this is 19 November 2012 and I'm in front of you today to discuss the uh, deteriorating fiscal situation of the Indian government's budget. I'm telling you since last, you know, a couple of my posts that many credit rating agencies are now warning Indian government that if they are not going to rein in their fiscal deficit, then they are going to, you know, uh, cut their credit rating into uh, to the level of junk bond. And immediately after this kind of warnings, you know, uh, Prime Minister Manmohan Singh and the Finance Minister Chidambaram and other people, uh, they started talking about, you know, uh, announcing some kind of steps which are going to rein in the fiscal deficit, which is going to limit the fiscal deficit. Uh, and I think a couple of, you know, weeks. I think last week and before that there were this kind of news that India will defer spending to rein in fiscal deficit. India is reviewing budget budgeted expenditure at each ministry and plans to defer some spending to the next financial year beginning in April to keep the fiscal deficit at 5.3% of GDP, a top finance ministry official told, told Reuters on Monday. So on one side, you know, this rhetoric is going on that the Indian government is serious about reining in the fiscal deficit. They want to bring it down to 5.3%, uh, or may, they want to limit it to 5.3%. 5, 5 the the uh, targeted limit they have already breached, and uh, they are going to you know uh, breach it you know, by a big amount. So they want to just limit that fiscal deficit. But as I'm telling you since last, you know, quite long time, in fact, since the beginning of my, you know, investigations, that you don't have to focus on what the government is actually saying because it's just lip service and, you know, it's, it's only propaganda news. What, what you have to do is you have to focus on what actually they are doing. So just after this announcement that they want to rein in the fiscal deficit, there were many news which suggested exactly the opposite, you know, actions of, you know, Manmohan Singh government. So I'm just going to throw, you know, I'm just going to, you know, uh, discuss some of these measures, you know, which uh, uh, Manmohan Singh and Chidambaram and other people are discussing actions which they are going to take in future, which is not going to result into lower fiscal deficit, but actually is going to balloon the fiscal deficit in future. And more fiscal deficit means more higher taxation for the future generation. More debt means, you know, more inflation. They are just going to, how they are going to monetize, you know, how they are going to bridge this gap of, you know, revenue and expenditure, this fiscal deficit. They only have, you know, three major ways, you know, in which they can do that. One is by increasing the taxation. So that's what is coming. Increased taxation is going to come in future. The future generation will be burdened with heavy taxes. They're going to borrow. I don't think so. They will be able to borrow more because uh, this worsening fiscal deficit is going to result into some kind of credit, you know, rating, you know, level, you know, reduced by the agencies. So I don't think so. The investors are going to be much more, you know, uh, attracted to government bonds. So borrowing is not going to be there, and, and you know that they cannot even they cannot increase the tax rate to 100 percent, you know, because uh, you know Lefer curve, you know. Principal analysis says that at the moment you increase the uh, tax rate, the you know tax revenues will start to decline. So there is inverse relationship. So then only only measure which is left for you know bridging this gap of revenue and expenditure is monetizing this debt. RBI is going to buy this government debt as it is happening all over the world. RBI will buy government debt. They will monetize the debt, and that means inflation in future. So they are going to print, you know, truckload of more money, and that's how government is going to bridge this gap. But anyways, <clears throat> I want to tell you those, you know, major items, you know, on which they want to spend money, and which is going to balloon the government's, you know, fiscal deficit, which is going to worsen the situation more in future for all of us. <clears throat> Uh, for, uh, so for example, Manmohan Singh said that he wants to spend one trillion in infrastructure. You know, at any cost. You know, Manmohan Singh told his cabinet ministers, you know, 77 minister uh, in his cabinet, that government's target of one trillion investment in infrastructure over the next five years must be met at <coughs> any cost. <coughs> now, Manmohan Singh uh, is, you know, supposedly an economist, and he is saying that at at, at any cost. 
you know of course he can say that because you know he is not going to span he is not going to you know uh, bear this burden of cost on his own back he is going to put all this burden on taxpayer the productive class of the you know a uh, society is back all this cost is going to be bear by productive people of indian society so that's why manmohan singh can just you know disregard whatever the cost is going to be there and he can talk like this you know like like you know uh, nonsense you know they he can you know do all this nonsense you know you know no economist will talk like this that at any cost you have to do something obviously cost is very important but as i said he is talking not from an economist's perspective but he is he is basically taking a he is talking from a politician's perspective so that's why because he's a politician he is not really worried about who is going to bear this cost you know i'll just tell you that what kind of you know amount they are planning to spend on infrastructure uh uh i did, i said 1 trillion dollar in the uh, 12 final 12 five year plan so that translates into 53.70 lakh crore or more than 10 lakh crore rupees per year over the 12 fi- uh, 12 uh, five year plan period of 2012 to 2017 every year he is going he wants to spend 10 lakh crore rupees on infrastructure now i know that infrastructure is important but government has no business developing infrastructure if they just leave it to the private sector the free market free market can provide roads and highways and telecommunications and airways and seaways and everything now in this you know small post i cannot tell you how that is going to happen if you are interested then go and read austrian economics work go and read for example walter brox you know privatizing roads and highways and that's where you will find all the answers that how free market has in you know past provided all these infrastructural facilities and it can very well provide those facilities in future and in present also only if the government allows that free market to function you know freely they are not doing that and they are they want to spend this 10 lakh crore rupees which is a per year which is staggering amount 1 trillion dollar you know for you know next 5 years that's going to create huge you know level of inflation you can just understand how they are going to how they are going to you know you know uh, you know acquire this money they just going to print it right all right this is one uh, one thing um also you know that last you know a couple of months you know they announced that they are going to now limit the uh, home uh, lpg cylinders to only six subsidized cylinder and after that the consumer will have to pay the full non subsidized amount which is you know something like 1000 rupees but now after the political backlash they know that they are going to lose votes so they are again you know reviewing the ca uh, cap on lpg cylinders you know what the ministers are saying such a decision was politically unsound <laughs> and in a late night development the petroleum ministry is understood to ha- understood to have asked all the three omcs to put on hold the hike in price of non subsidized cylinders okay the mili- ministry is also considering a review of the six cylinder cap on subsidized cylinders there is increasing pressure from within the party to review the cap uh, there is a strong demand for a review of the six cylinder quota and raise it to 12 cylinder that means more subsidies for all this gas cylinder that means more inflation that means the budget deficit is going to balloon right you remember they they reduce this you know a uh, 12 cylinder to 6 cylinders to you know bring down their budget deficit but but because political parties they are you know now clamoring that this is you know going to result into loss of votes for us that's why you please review it and increase up to you know increase it up to the original 12 cylinder or original or whatever 12 you know from 6 to 12 cylinders so that's why under the pressure you know and they want to just win votes is politician so they are again going to review this thing admitting that the decision to limit the supply to six cylinder has caused hardship mr moili told andy devi that it was for the public sector oil firms to take a call on raising the cap they have gone by some arithmetic that that on average only six cylinders are enough for a house so this is arithmetic but there is also chemistry which have to which have not which they have not done uh they have not done their chemistry they have not done it through their politics and politicians are like this thing and remember all this all these uh companies are also not free market private companies they are just state owned uh, uh what they call you know uh uh 
companies, right? Uh, uh, public sector, PSUs, public sector units. So uh, it's all you know. It, it's it's all smoke and mirror that this is you know raised by some kind of private company. It's not done by them. I understand that the price of petrol and everything should come down, but not uh, by giving subsidies because that is just going to you know give more pain in future ultimately when uh, inflation is going to run out of your hand then you will have to forcefully you know uh, rein in everything but uh, the real way is again as I said you know allowing the free market and that will bring down the prices anyways um, uh, Mr. Finance Minister Chidambaram he said in India to borrow more for fiscal deficit that that government will borrow more to fund a fiscal deficit that that is now estimated at 5.3 percent of GDP this fiscal year. Uh, how much they are going to borrow more? The additional borrowing above the previous target of 5.1 percent will amount to at least 200 billion rupees a senior finance ministry official told Reuters in New Delhi. That means 20,000 crore rupees more. I think 200 uh, billion rupees means 20,000 crore rupees more they are going to borrow. And uh, that is going to increase the fiscal deficit from 5.1% to 5.3%. Uh, gross market borrowing in the, uh, for the current fiscal year is 5.7 5 trillion rupees. And that is, in, that is not enough. Sluggish tax revenue and high spending on subsidies such as food, fuel and fertilizer force the government to revise the fiscal deficit target to 5.3%. So, as I said, they are not going to reduce the fiscal deficit. Government is always for more and more spending. Only that's how they win their votes, right? And because they don't have to spend their own money, so that's why they are also very reckless. They don't care about how much they are spending and what value they are getting for the money which they are spending. They are spending somebody else's money on somebody else, so that's why they, they are not going to care you know, about spending. What they will do is they will try to make up the deficit by printing more money or by increasing the tax rate. They are not going to reduce spending. That means more inflation. Okay. India to pay state fuel retailers 5.5 billion oil subsidies. So more oil subsidies for the state fuel retailers. You know, uh, companies like um, uh, PSUP, uh, public sector units like, you know, uh, uh, HP and BP and other such, you know, firms. They are going to get uh, more, you know, subsidies. Uh, center to uh, again Chidambaram is say, saying this uh, center is ready to handhold stress sector that means more fascism you know uh, if the economy improves and growth improves the sectors which are not doing well will recover but in the meanwhile we will have to do some hand hand holding and try to help the sectors recover no you don't have to help them they made a mistake and they must take the losses you know when they, they when they make profit you know, nobody talks about that, you know, when they are making losses, why you have to hold, you know, hold their hand? You know, holding their hand means pure fascism. You are going to loot the taxpayer and provide the taxpayer money to all these inefficient firms. They are CEOs, you know. They deserve to, you know, go to docks. They deserve to shut down their shop. They, they should be doing that because, because they are not good entrepreneurs. They made errors. And in the market economy, they should suffer. If they enjoy the profit, they should also suffer their losses. Why you should be punishing taxpayers you know, in the name of uh, rescuing all these companies? You don't have to rescue them, right? This is pure fascism, as I said. Business and government working together and looting the productive sector of the economy. The NPAs of the public sector bank, actually the bankers are very much you know, concern of government because bankers are the ones know who is giving you know this resources financial resources money which government likes to spend to buy their votes so they have a very close relationship bankers and the government so the government is worrying about all these bankers the NPAs of the public sector banking group had increased by 0.98 percent in the one year period ending September 12 and that is what is worrying these people as I said all these banks are bankrupt already it's just a matter of you know uh, public knowing about it. The moment the bank runs will start, it will be revealed that they did not have any money, right? They are insolvent. The government had proposed to inject 15,000 crore rupees of capital in PSU Bank. 15,000 crore rupees. This is pure inflation, nothing else. They are just creating money out of thin air and handing over to these bankers. Uh, start, uh, stating that slowdown was a temporary phenomena, the minister said the situation is not alarming. Situation is going to get alarming in future and it's not a temporary phenomena. 
the real you know big depression hasn't even begun right now at the worldwide level right when when the problem will start to kick in the pro you know the the recession is going to deepen and it's going to turn into greater depression right uh, all kisan credit cards kcc would be converted into atm cards and that agricultural sector credit disposal target of rs 5.75 lakh crore up to up from 4.75 lakh crore in the last fiscal would be met so they are going to give 5.75 lakh crore rupees worth of credit cards to all these farmers now from where they are going to get this 5.75 lakh crore rupees they are going to print it when they are going to hand it over this money to these farmers this free money to these farmers they will go and demand the available goods and services in the market and that's going to increase the price again as i said more inflation right so this is nothing but you know fascism and the same same policy of inflationism and they not they are not going to reduce their spending subbara says policy easing possible in january rbi is also going to probably reduce their you know interest rate in the january coming january 2013 you know and for that i think they are already planning they are doing some kind of you know mischief with the inflation data already the inflation data is phony so they just reduced it by some 25 basis point and you know you know last you know month and they said oh inflation is now going down things are becoming cheaper so now rbi is in a position to reduce their bank rate because you know subbara is saying that you know 4 to 5% inflation rate is he's comfortable <laughs> i i just don't understand how inflation can be comfortable for anyone obviously for the bankers and for the politician it is comfortable not for the common man but in any ways they are you know they are doing some mischief bringing down the inflation rate so that they can get the needed excuse to bring down the interest rate and print more money and help the government all right and in the end now they are conceding that deficit target looks doubtful india will struggle to meet its already swollen deficit target this year after a dismal response to this week's auction of mobile phone licenses and a battle to sell stakes in state companies finance ministry official privately concede so they are now conceding that they are not going to meet this fiscal deficit target as i am telling you since last long that is that was very much sure and right? because they, are, they they don't want to reduce their spending they just want to increase revenue somehow and that's not going to be easy unless an alternative they dismantle bureaucracies and departments and you know you know bank you know you know you know roll back the government they stop spending money you are not going to rein in the fiscal deficit so we are going to see lot of you know fiscal trouble in future in coming years anyway so this is about the worsening you know a uh, fiscal situation of you know the indian government and as i said uh, they are not going to stop spending what they are actually going to do is they will continue to print money and inflation is not going to abate we will have to brace up for uh high you know uh prices of everything and to protect our purchasing power against all this thing we will have to continue to accumulate gold and silver they are after gold and silver also rbi just today announced that they are banning all the bank loans for buying gold and they are also fooling a lot of people in you know investing in shares instead of you know buying gold so stay away from all this kind of phony schemes of government you know uh, rajiv gandhi some kind of they have this scheme of rajiv gandhi equity shares or something like that just stay away from all this paper promises continue to accumulate precious metals because you know that is the only you know they are the only things which are going to be last standing you know uh, protection uh, insurance against all these governments inflationary policies all right so as i am telling you since long you stay stay safe out there and i'll i'll continue to update you on all this monetary and fiscal mess that is going on in india all right so i'll see you later on in next week probably thank you very much for watching me good night